Let's now cross live and uh, talk to the political commentator at Young Voices UK, Bill Bowkett, who joins us here on Talk Radio. Morning to you, Bill. Very good morning, Chris. Though. So uh, tell us first, I mean, we've got these restrictions, apparently, that are coming back in, masks and uh, people having to uh, isolate. I mean, I'm not so worried about the isolation side of things. That seems like common sense. But also not ruling out restrictions over Christmas. I mean, do you think the public are going to uh, uh, abide by all of that? Do you think the public are going to take that? Well, the interesting thing is, is that when you look at different opinion polls as to the Plan B measures um, that were proposed uh, back in August and September, um, the public are very supportive of it, things like uh, face masks and also mandatory jabs and even a lockdown, another lockdown. But the problem is, is that seeing the scenes in Europe, you know, the protests, you know, further restrictions, I'm worried as to what's going to happen uh, if it was introduced in this country, given that Britain now is seen as one of the most free countries when it comes to coronavirus restrictions. And I feel that uh, the government are acting too hastily when it comes to introducing these new restrictions, uh, given that we still don't know enough information about this new variant, about its transmissibility, whether it evades immunity either from the vaccine or previous infection. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know what's... Honestly, what would happen if Boris Johnson were to suddenly announce more restrictions and whether the, the government, uh, whether the public would uh, be on board with it? But does that imply maybe he's got it right in as much as they're not too draconian? Their masks, which I think a lot of people will object to, but some people will feel reassured by that. Some people will have no problem with wearing a mask. They're keeping people, as I said, um, isolated uh, if they are um if they've been somewhere that they uh, uh, that might have uh, be come into con contact with positive cases um some people would say well look that's actually exactly the right balance it's just enough yeah that might be the case and i think um with the public as an air responsibility personal responsibility when it comes to uh, you know, protecting others and thinking of others as well. I think often uh, when I'm on uh, the underground, for instance, it often in congested, you know, busy periods, I often see people wearing face masks because they think it's a sensible thing to do. But most of the time, at least on public transport, hardly any, you know, people, I reckon about 75% of people don't wear a face mask. And the reason being is, is that they feel that they're protected because they've had two jabs and now, uh, people are having a third with a booster uh, and also they're seeing you know stories from different epistemologists and virologists seeing that uh, we've gone past of, uh, the worst stage uh, after Freedom Day uh, in July um, so I'm not sure whether having it as a mandatory you know mandate to have masks back again on public transport would do any good also by the fact that um there was an interesting story in the spectator uh, the other, uh, just a few days ago which showed that uh, because even though it's mandatory you know on buses and also on the underground in london uh, i think only a hundred people have been denied uh, entry onto public transport for not wearing a face mask so i'm not sure whether if even was to be mandatory whether it would do um, any effective good uh, okay let's talk about the messaging around uh taking covid home for christmas the front page of the mail on sunday today is saying that the word christmas was not banned but chosen not to be used uh because they felt that it, they needed a, a more inclusive word um, a word that, 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 that people who didn't celebrate Christmas would understand. So it was either taking it home for the holidays or just don't take COVID-19 home. I mean, is this a bit of a storm in a teacup or is this, this genuinely something that people could get angry about? No, I think it's the former. I think um, I think it's slightly over-exaggerating that. I mean, I think... Uh, or was it Sibig Barty, the Conservative MP, said, you know, he branded it as as, as ridiculous. Um, but honestly, I, I think we could read a little too much into this There story you go, Steve Ed Allen. When it comes to... <laughs> Steve Allen agrees with you. He thinks that this is a bit of a storm in a teacup. I think 
<laughs> See, I, I disagree. I think that it's it's look, okay. It's not being probably banned. We're laying it on a bit thick by saying that, but I think that that it is. I think irritating that people think that people are so stupid. That's what annoys me about it. That people think that that I don't know. You're someone that doesn't celebrate Christmas. An important message is being put out about not taking COVID home for Christmas or being being careful around the Christmas season. And people think that if you don't celebrate Christmas, you're so stupid that you're going to think, oh, well, that doesn't apply to me. And I find that quite depressing. Perhaps so. And uh, But it, what is interesting is um, that there's another story also in the Sunday Telegraph, which also re relates to government and uh, wokeism, where uh, apparently officials have been told to carry out more uh, diligence and checks to examine um, when they're inviting different speakers coming in to, uh, to speak at the civil service because they're, you know, too radical or too woke. Um, I think it's like a few senior conservatives uh, reacted with, you know, anger when uh, when it emerged that uh, the civil servants had been invited um, Priya Brimvada Gopal, you know, the former mm. Cambridge academic um, who had made um, pretty incendiary remarks towards uh, Pretty Patel. So, uh, we've always seen stories around this, around kind of um, the left kind of dominating in the government and Whitehall uh, and having to then respect, you know, religious minorities and minorities as a whole in order to remain uh, inclusive and diverse within the workforce. Uh, OK, uh, just one more story will do. And that's this uh, story about Steve Baker. And uh, this is um, a new campaign group from Steve Baker, who is going to be campaigning for lower taxes. And uh, this is uh, Tim Shipman, who has written a story about this in The Times, saying that uh, essentially, which is something that I've been saying for a long time, a lot of commentators have been saying for a long time, Boris Johnson is a, is, is, is a socialist bordering on a communist when it comes to some of his policies. And we have a Conservative Party with a majority enacting policies that Jeremy Corbyn would be proud of. And clearly, there's some unrest within the Conservative Party about this. Absolutely. Uh, taxes are a very touchy issue. When I attended party conference, um, having to defend these tax rises for ordinary working people uh, is such a difficult thing to make, given that Conservatives have always been a party of low taxes. And Steve Baker, you know, who previously had made David Cameron and Theresa May's lives a nightmare, says he's setting up this new group to campaign for, for low taxes. So we can expect some rebellions. But the interesting thing, I think, seeing this story is that uh, a medium term issue for Downing Street, uh, for Boris Johnson, is that uh, it's going to be tricky when it comes to these rebellions. He's having rebellions on taxes. He's had rebellions on social care. He's had rebellions on reforms to second jobs, uh, to levelling up. Uh, it's like it's slowly, even though the Conservatives have a majority of 77, he's just slowly building up these enemies within his own party. And I fear that come to the future that um, that, uh, that could explode into a potential leadership challenge. Well, I think that if they're going to do it, they need to do it quite soon because a new leader would need a, a year or two to settle in to fight a new election. But genuinely, I think that Boris is a, is a dead duck walking and it is time to to get rid of the chaos that he brings and bring in a leader that is actually conservative. People voted, whether you like or loathe the Conservative Party, they voted to have a Conservative Party with a majority and they're not getting those policies. It's, 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 it's as simple as that, really. Yep, totally. And uh, I feel with the last election, a lot of voters' behaviour was motivated around the idea of Brexit. And that's totally true. And Boris was seen to be the only major candidate of the major parties that was actively taking a stance on Brexit, wanting to get Brexit done. But ultimately, people vote Conservative because they want Conservative policies. You know, they want the party to be pro-business. They want them to have low taxes. They want to maintain tradition. So if a Conservative party or a leader like Boris Johnson isn't able to do that and the party feels like uh, he's a liability in the long run in terms of uh, fending off Labour and also the other parties, then um, they need to react to that. All right, Bill Bowker, good to talk to you. Thank you, reporter and uh, 
uh, commentator at Young Voices UK. I mean, 